Welcome back to Filmmakers Lab Podcast, where we educate you about the film industry and inspire you to follow your dreams. My name is Lena Colleen, and my guest today is Vincent Levy Bryant, composer. P.K.A. V. Levy. (laughs) V-L-E-E-V. That's right. Yeah. We got that. Got to drop the Vili V in it. I, too much work to get to that. I like the Vili V, though. Yeah, and all the rappers know me as V. They call me Vili for short, you know, Onk and Vili. I, you know, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I start off my show with, uh, if I know if I know the person I spent time with them, I start off with how they inspired me. And um, the way you inspire, inspired me was watching you when we did the 48 hour film uh-huh. compose of a score for the film in no time. Right. Like I sat and watched you get at your piano and, you know, just go at it, you know? Thank and, you. you know, I'm a music, I, 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 I would like to think that I'm musically inclined, uh-huh. but to actually make a sound to a picture to me, is like um, some kind of talent. Um, How do you? So first, mm-hmm. tell me. Mm-hmm. So we we should know each other before meeting here because we're both from the same town. Yeah, and it's so crazy because your piano teacher was my dance teacher. Gloria and we Jackson. just found that out. I know. That, that is, woman used to crack my fingers with a big... That's insane. She used to crack my fingers with this World's Fair pencil. <laughs> oh, my God. I was studying Hannon, Hannon and classic classical training with her. Right. Jazz training with my dad back at the house. But that woman... And I told my mother, and my mother came with me. She said, do you think it was effective to hit him with on his fingers? He's very sensitive about that. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like... Glory was not a joke. She was like... Well, uh, that's funny because she was a totally different dance teacher, though. Of course she was. She was yeah. different, you know? But I was like... I'm going to tell you why she was, was like... She this. was a sweetheart to us. I was a troublemaker. I was a mischief. Oh, well, I was go. always goofing. I'm not and, surprised. And I would practice real fast and get it and go in and play it. She said, you're not reading that. You mm. learned, you've learned. you learned it and you now you just... I need you to read it. And I was like, okay. So I'm reading it now and I'm changing. She says, you're being funny. And she, that was how she was with me. Things got smoother, better later because I was one of her top students, right. you know, especially for like the little uh, recitals. And then I was involved with uh, Dr. Spiegel from 59. And um, you remember PS 59? Of course. Okay. Well, he used to go around and pick out all these talented kids. My brother won drumming competition and I, just when I was supposed to be up for the piano recital, I was, <laughs> I was out in front of the place. <laughs> With the hot dog vendor. And um, yeah, true story. And you missed it. <laughs> and I missed my time to come up. Wow. Oh, forget it. But, but how did you get into it? Was it was it that, you know, playing the piano? How did you actually get into yeah. composing? I had nephritis. I went to PS one fifty six. I had nephritis in the fifth grade. Mm. It was kidney disorder devastating i didn't know how devastating it was they all made this big deal and i was quarantined i missed the whole fifth grade wow and um i was you know first born i'm a second generation piano player mm. we had everything i mm. had my first fender Rhodes piano i was 11 years old nice farfisa organ a spinet piano you know and my brothers had my brother had his drums the other brother yosef had his bass and you know chuck had his drums we played each other's instruments but my dad would sleep in between his jobs. At the time, he was repairing TV and driving bus. Mm. But he left He left driving cab and then driving bus. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> anyway, the point is, that was my video game. So we'd have all these TVs and whatnot that were broken in the basement, and the ones that were working, my father would say, turn the volume down, turn the volume off mm-hmm. on the TV, down where you yeah. could hear it, and play along with the TV. 
that was to preoccupy me. That so is that pretty was, cool. That's how it happened, y'all. So you never know how it's going to, you know, you're 11, you're a kid, you have an imagination, you're just having fun. But it didn't hit me how important that was and that it was a vocation until I met Curtis Mayfield. Mm. And that's when, when I told him that story, he said, I want you to look at this and tell me what you got. And I did. Then I took some formal um, training with um, what we call the modes of music and then I just took off from there. Mm. My computer just locked on me. <laughs> That's not good. Okay. Typing on the dinosaur. <laughs> Typing on the dinosaur, he got me. <laughs> so we do this all over or what? No, uh uh. No, no um, I, can you get that paper out of my bag? <laughs> Hey, listen, things happen. What you what you want from my life? Mm -hmm. Things happen. But you mm -hmm. you um you went to the film club at the Jamaica Library. Oh what God. was that about? That's yes. Oh, you that's the real while I was eleven, this all happened during B eleven. My mother enrolls me in the Queens Branch, Jamaica, the Jamaica Branch Queens Library movie club. And in this movie club, they showed old movies, and I fell in love with this one movie called The Red Balloon. Yes. And I just... I remember know. The Red Balloon. Yeah, oh yeah. I that said... Boy in that balloon. I anyway, said, what? I had to see it, and every week I just... I re, was Wednesday. She would get off work. My mother was at Jamaica Hospital. She would leave and come and pick me up, and we'd go to, to the library and see these movies. And I always asked for Red Balloon. She says, Vincent, pick another movie. And I was like, <laughs> I want that movie. But she didn't, they didn't realize I was studying it. I wanted to see why. I would, had questions. I wanted to know why, you know. I had a chance to tell them, oh, I want to watch the same movie again. Right. Yeah, let's do it. Right. You know? So that was me, that or Hercules or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Three Stooges, which my mother said, you can watch that at home on TV. Don't, you don't want that. Uh, so I got, in, I got into that, you know. And um, that was my first real I was head on with cinema I didn't really realize mm -hmm. that I just liked it and ever since then it kinda... were you thinking in terms of um composing at that time or was it just no. movie I just liked the movie um as a matter of fact that movie has very little score to it yeah very little it's sound design in that movie right and certain instruments made accents but it wasn't a real theme it didn't you know it was a short so and it wasn't even something that you was even thinking about right it mm -hmm. wasn't at home like i said playing along with the movie or the tv mm -hmm. let me tell you the favorite my tv shows were the monsters <laughs> speed racer batman um oh god you're dating uh, yourself I know I am. I'm 62. What do you, Speed just, Racer? Yeah. What do you mean? Gigantor? Speed Racer was my show. And, um, and, oh, yeah, and Dark Shadows. Oh, wow. Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows was on uh, radio, right? No, it was not on the radio. I, we wasn't doing radio. It started out on radio. It might have, but I ain't that old. <laughs> it was on TV. I only know that yeah. because of my parents. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We had a babysitter who used to babysit us while my mother was either working late from the hospital or mm. coming home late. So she was a head nurse. She was one of she was one of the first head, black head nurses at um Jamaica Hospital, yeah. nineteen sixty three. There's a list of them. But um Dolores Shepherd is is one of the other ones. But anyway, um, We don't know her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm dropping these names. Nobody knows. No. Okay, so so this was my video game. I'm at home doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just an eleven year old kid with an imagination pretending I'm making the music for the monsters and the Batman theme and, you know, on and on and on. And Dark Shadows playing spooky, scary music. Mm. If you turn my dad's organ up too loud, he would stomp on the floor or he would open up the basement door and, and say, well, I know you ain't playing that that loud. You ain't playing it that loud. Don't, don't, there's a mark. Don't turn it up. And, but I had fun doing that. Yeah. 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 And then... There was uh, a, a meeting with um, Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. 
So, so yeah. you and your brothers had a band, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Okay, was it just local in Queens? Yep, and and the tri the tri county area, Queens, Brooklyn, okay. you know, Manhattan. Yeah, that, yeah. That. Yeah, and the Bryant Brothers Band, and we won talent shows, and we did things like that, you know. And it was the whole playing through the neighborhood. Yeah. Roy Benton, Brooke Benton's son, yeah. was our first bass player mm. before our little brother, Yosef Joey, was our bass player. Mm -hmm. And when he finally became our bass player, that's when things were, we could practice all the time, because mm -hmm. we can only work out on the weekends. We were more hangout buddies, and then when he got in the band playing the bass, the music became, you know, we were doing music, but yeah. as hangout buddies, you going through the streets, you know. <laughs> so so music has just been just surrounding you just all your life. All my life. All your life. Yeah. So Curtis Mayfield, a lot of his music has been scored. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, what was it like meeting him? What was that? What was that like? That was... That blew my mind. I'm 26 years old, 27 years old. I met William Fuller Sr. He was an architect, God bless him, late, great William Fuller. Um, and he was an architect and we talked and I wanted to see what a recording studio in a home was like. Mm. Check out the design, the acoustics, the gotcha. soundproofing. Mm -hmm. And he said, come on, I, I got a client I did one for, blah, blah, blah. Like when I talk about people, I try to imitate them. And Bill took me out to this man's house, at King Edward Drive over there off of Cascade. And I didn't know it was Curtis Mayfield. He never said. Oh, wow. And Curtis walks in and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, I literally got dizzy. I was like, <laughs> I said, Curtis Mayfield, mm. and he was like, hey, man, hi, nice to meet you. That's You're so playing cool. a nice piano, man. In two hours, the man was talking me into being in his band. That's cool. Yeah. England, How long did that last? Two years. I mean, we did that tour. It was two months. England, Holland, the U.K., and, and Asia, Japan, and um, rehearsing and working with him in the studio on I'm Gonna Get You Sucker and um, the interning with him and being at the studio with Carlos Glover. Carlos Glover from from before, the, the real, the, <laughs> the real, um, what's the word, uh, crunk. That's mm. Carlos Glover. Okay. Lil, Lil John, yeah, but Carlos Glover invented yeah, crunk. Too. And all of those guys, Marzette, uh, Marzette, uh, God, I can't remember his name, but he had a studio and they all used to go there. So um, were you were you scoring then? No, I was. I impressed Curtis with what I knew about string arrangements uh, and my own stuff. I had my demos. Okay. So no, I wasn't scoring, but I was hanging out with him. Right. He bought a brand new Prophet Five. They came out the Digital Prophet, and I was into synthesis, <clears throat> music synthesis. I started the first music synthesis workshop yeah. at Savannah State College in '79. I was, on, I was about to ask you about that. Yeah, and. Yeah. I started programming for. He says, hey, "Vince, make a horn sound." Yes, yeah, so I would do that. Mm. Make the string sound. I would make the string mm -hmm. sound. And I showed him I could do all of that stuff. And he, you could save it. You know, you could make the sound, yeah. write it in, save it, and then you could go to it as a patch. And that to him was like, "Wow, man!" So, so it was back then. That was back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, do you? Only play the keyboards? Do, what else do you play? I play piano, bass, drums, mm -hmm. a little tiny bit of guitar, enough to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> piano's my primary instrument, and now the pianos are controllers, so you don't, right. you know, it doesn't, if you have a piano background, that's all you really need to stick with, but you yes, still right. have to study the timbre or the personality of the instrument that you're imitating. And What is a timbre? Timber, the timbre <laughs> is, okay. I'm the, glad you brought that up. Okay, it is the style that the instrument is actually played in, like violins oh, are. Oh, the style. They're, right. Okay. Violins are, they're stroked, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a certain way. And the way you make the tremolo on it, you have to make the tremolo with the finger. And so we have two things on the controller. Same thing on the synthesizers, because synthesizers were real, originally made to imitate sounds. So right. you have the portmento and the glide mm -hmm. and the pitch. And then you have expression. So some of those are built in the one wheel and then pitch is built on the other wheel. So you could slide notes. Like imitating a flute mm -hmm. is, was a breeze. Imitating acoustic guitar was a breeze. Okay. So all these different types of control mechanisms that go in the electronic side, mm -hmm. the digital side, are to help 
the sample sound like the real thing. Sound, sound like the real and thing. And I was into mastering that way before they have the nice and you samples have. now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. you. Have. Thank you very yep. much. You definitely have. I mean, I've seen yeah. it. I, I watched you do it. So I, yeah. I know that to Thank be you. true. Um, so tell me, how do you approach, what is your approach to scoring a film? Wow. That's a good question. My latest approach and the approach has evolved. The, the approach has mm. been, it started out with, okay, see, the first thing is first things first. You don't have an ego in it. There's no ego. Of course. You can't have it. It's not, we're not making a record. I'm right. not going to get to sing or rap on it or whatever. Right, right, I'm right. not going to be on stage dancing and singing, you know. It is what the director wants. It's his vision. That's right. To help tell the story. Yeah. You keep those three things in check, you have no ego in it. So you're waiting. So... And if and when a director can speak to you on those terms, if they have a musical understanding, it's great. Most of them get in trouble because they want something that sounds like the next guy's movie mm. or they want something they heard before. So they give you what's known as spec music. Mm. And then oh, you wow. go from okay. there. Yeah, the spec thing. music. Okay. You know, if I get a filmmaker that gives me spec music again, I'm going to already know where we're going. Right. But it's it's. <laughs> I rather them tell me or try mm. to explain what they want, mm -hmm. the and I feeling. try to come up with it. Mm. You know, gotcha. but the whole thing with giving me somebody else's music, it's hard not to plagiarize when they want you to plagiarize it. They really do. Mm. It doesn't matter, and this is where you can't have any ego in it. Now, my approach to it now, my latest evolution mm -hmm. is: give me your block or give me your scene. Tell me what you want the scene to say. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a few examples. And because now everything is touch, 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 computer, digital, they have a million ideas and they want you to make so many changes. So I have a cutoff on that. So my latest evolution now is for a feature film, I give them the theme and I have the movements in the theme. Then out of the side of that, I do the underscore. And then the underscore is going to dictate what that scene is saying or what it's saying for the character in the scene or how the outcome is. What is an underscore? Underscore is that music that you're really not supposed to recognize is there, but it gives you a psychological feeling oh, about that background, scene. Background, like? Like, the strongest point I could give you, two extremes, horror and romance. Okay. Horror films, you automatically know the boogeyman is coming. <laughs> you know it's just about to go down. Right. It's about to be screaming and bloodletting. Right. You, or you about you have to be scared out of your wits. Percussion is a big deal, and custom sounds that resemble percussion and resemble in uh, danger. Like um, gotcha. one of my favorite films is The Shining. The use of high pitched oh, yeah. strings. Another good, another good film that does it for me is um, oh, I got two or three of them, but The Shining is on top shelf with the classiness of it. You know, mm -hmm. um, Insidious was wow. It was. I didn't see that. That's another one that'll just, you know. I'm not Fear a horror is person. another one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I grew up on horror. My mother loved horror. She loved all of that. Um, and I think that's why I have a penchant for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you let, can... let me ask you this real quick. Mm -hmm. Do you read the script? Yeah. You do. But guess what? I don't get. I don't marry it. <laughs> okay. I don't. But I, does it help? It does. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. It helps for the pacing of how many moods I'm, I'm going to have to go through mm -hmm. with the characters. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes there are different ways to do it. The protagonists, I'm going to follow them because it's their film. Of course. So I'm going to follow their lows and their highs. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to okay. map that out okay. with the director. Right. Then we're going to have some variations. Then after that, everybody else identifying who the antagonist is, got to get him next. Right. Or her. Or mm -hmm. Don't matter. No matter. I saw something the other day. I've been watching a lot of Netflix and I want to get into the TV thing, which is cool. I have a friend of mine who's a composer for TV as well. And he's like, the TV thing, it's harder, faster work. Yeah. You don't have time for you got it's coming out next week, next right. episode. Right. So you've got to, you know, so you keep a certain amount of cues. So that gave me the idea during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I put together over 125 tracks ready for, for visual media, either gaming an episodic TV or a film. Mm -hmm. And I put them together in such a way as you can match the BPMs, that's the beats per minute, right. and the, the key signature, that's the, the, the uh, key the song is in, mm -hmm. or the theme is in, and the style, the genre, the style. Gotcha. So you can mix and match them. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, some of the tracks will follow each other because they'll be along the same 
you know, line or same flavor, gotcha. like from happy to sad or by colors from uh, blue to red, you know, that kind of a deal. So do you compose according to a color palette? I used to. Okay. I don't use the emotional color palette Got you. anymore. Okay. And the reason is personal, but it's also, it's better. I work faster now because it's it's more intuitive to me. Mm. You know, I let me tell you what I work with. I look at... I believe that. Yeah, I look at the scenery. <laughs> I look at the blocking and I look at the costume and I know already who the character is because I read the script. I've only done two films, two shorts, where I didn't read a script. And that was the 48-hour thing because right. we, have we didn't one. have one. Right. But I got the flavor. The director's like right there with you. Yeah. I love working with Hakeem Can we tell you Robinson. what the story He'll is tell you. beforehand? He's like, yeah. Vince, I don't like those strings. Get rid of those. <laughs> Give me that. Give me. Put a banjo here. A banjo and a piano. But, you know? before, but before, in starting to compose, that's not something, if you're not trained in it, that's something that you have to like learn. Yeah. Right. That's something yeah. like that's like an on the job type of deal. It is. Right. Yeah. Because I, I mean, you're, you're talking <laughs> about things that that I know that I know that you necessarily might not know. Right. So that that's that's pretty cool. I am now still backtracking and learning. Yeah. the So-called terms and the way. The colleges are teaching it, right? But forget now. I'm yeah, because we were I'm, we were guerrilla style with I'm, it. I'm <laughs> I'm 11 years old, and I'm already getting it on the end result, and I'm having fun with it, right? So then I get to doing it. The first time I did this, I had a little studio I was a part of in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. The students from SCAD, mm -hmm. the film and television school, would come over to the island from Savannah to get drunk and hang out, and I would meet them occasionally. <laughs> yeah. They're escaping, you know. They're having fun. They're young. And I said, I got a studio over here. Um, well, they're doing their student thesis animation or their film. So I say, come on, see the studio. And they see the studio. They plunk down their little 75 bucks. I put together a score for them. I give it to them. I say, you're on your own with your editor. Mm. Cut and paste. And these kids were getting A's. And these professors were like, who is this V guy? Who is this guy? Mm. So I went to an open house and I talked to a couple of them. They said, you could really do this. But it didn't take me... It took me a few years to realize I could really do it. Right. Even the experience with Curtis, which happened about 10 years before that, I still didn't feel like I could really do this. It was fun to see, mm. but I never really got to until that happened. Right. Then I got to Atlanta and I started hanging out with image video and people like that and mm -hmm. other filmmakers. And the big blast off came for sure after meeting Hakeem and Regina. Right. That was, you know, and... And that was 2011, 2012. So eyes it's, entertainment. It's, it, yeah, eyes entertainment. Yeah. And so it's been. That's the first time we worked together. Right. Yeah. That's how I met you. Yeah. So so then it's been from there. It's been a climb from one filmmaker to the next mm. to situations to, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? And then I was also leaning on um, my my ex my um, experience as a, a roadie for a company that was delivering music equipment mm. to jingle producers in New York City. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I worked for Bill Sonnenberg and we had the we had the 30 rock contract, Saturday Night Live, David Letterman nice. and all the studios with all the jingle writers, you know. Okay. Um God, I remember meeting Marcus Miller at this studio called Automat and um he he went to Springfield High too. What's his name? Marcus Miller, the bass player. Marcus Luther Miller. Luther Vandross, Marcus that name Miller. Sounds, yeah, anyway, yeah. so I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> I'm not as old as you. I used, to patch, I used to patch these synthesizers and make these sounds, and they found out I could do that, so I started doing that too. Wow. So now all this is coming together, and there isn't anything that I don't think I can do. Mm. You know, and I am even started teaching some beat makers how to score their friends. That's films. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because we talked about the difference in just making beats and scoring. Big difference. What's the difference? It's not, you're not doing, a, you're not making a beat. It's cool to you and there are places for it, mm -hmm. but it's not setting the mood. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's Makes not setting sense. the mood. Yeah. It's not giving the person who's watching and viewing that psychological push to make the 2D image a 3D image in their mind mm -hmm. and their experience of you know, enjoying the film. Right. So, you know, you know the Batman is walking in when you hear that da 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 blah. Gotcha. Or you hear the low D, you know it's that moment 
a guy like Hans Zimmer or a guy like um, or any of these guys that score, they're going to give you what the character is calling for, mm -hmm. the identifying thing for the character. Right. So, yeah, no, it's it's a matter of reaching the psychological in you. Like but not that. everybody has that. That's innate. That's no, something it's, that, a, it's a craft. Yes, yeah, definitely a craft. a craft. Yeah. And I don't think I'm not not trying to minimize it. I don't think it's something that you ha have to go to school for. I honestly believe that you can't teach that. You, it's weird because you're right. You are right. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's more and more. You don't have to go to school for a lot of things. There's right. a lot of YouTubes that'll teach you. Yeah. And you have to get with your your people that you hanging with, all your friends, all your filmmaking buddies. They got to come and rely on you. You got to rely on them, kick it with them. And you've got to get to a point where you're working together. And you are understanding how you work together to help tell the story. If you focus on telling the story, you're going to win. Exactly. That's it. What's your favorite genre to score? Oh, God. It's the one I have not done yet. That Horror. is. Oh, look at that. Horror. I can't wait. I have some stuff. I have one theme on my SoundCloud. And on that SoundCloud, I don't even... I don't think I heard that one. You haven't, because if you did, you would let me know. Because <laughs> on the theme, I have I have a warning that said, you must be prayed up to listen to this. Oh, track. wow. Okay. And I'm very serious about it. Because when okay. I wrote that track, <laughs> when I wrote that track, it was some very serious darkness going on. Mm, I don't want to go and get into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, we don't want to go into it. I don't, I don't but the point is, <laughs> I got to channel that... I don't have too much of an ego that I can't work into my craft. I got you. You know, I think Chet you Hopper should, is a though. percussionist. He told me, he said, let your ego come out in your playing. Mm. And I said, wow, I've always done. I didn't know that I was doing it. But now consciously I know. And during that time, I wrote these three tracks, but that one track did it. And I got to tell you something. The logo, the picture I have on it is a giant spider, but that's just the beginning. Mm. So the I don't track think takes I saw you. it. No, you, you, it's down in there deep. Yeah. But horror is what I haven't done yet. And I have so much that I want to do with that. That's some innovative stuff that hasn't been done yet. Halloween is another one of my favorites. Okay. You know, um, but um, action is, um, you know, with the big taiko drums, the big booms that go on. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, like, um, oh, God, Iron Man, um, the Avengers. Oh, I love the Avengers. Mm. That stuff is so... Junkie oh, XL does Avengers, Tom Hulkenberg. And um, I, I've been um, ostracized because I am not an Avengers or DC or Marvel person. I've been ostracized. <laughs> I just had a whole conversation about this with, with my cousin. And he's like, you know, you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, but yeah. Um, he's a sound engineer. So I could see why he would be so attracted to those type of films. The character arcs in the comic book, I call it the comic book. Yeah, he, yeah. Is so intriguing. He was telling me I, about that. I don't understand why you wouldn't be. See, I heard somebody else. It's not down. that I'm not. It's just, I don't know. Maybe I just need to sit down and just you do. watch it. I had somebody else. I listened to somebody else. A big star just put down Marvel saying something about it. Oh, it it's not Scorsese. that I don't like it. Scorsese. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, he, that's he, because he not has real his, movies. No, it's not. But it's, that's because he has his own style. He does. Yeah, you and, know. And I and it's impeccable for what it he is. does. It is. But the character arc in these action yeah. superhero films yeah. is so intense. Black Panther, the guy who did the score for Black yeah. Panther, okay? Yeah. Ludwig Göransson. Mm. He was roommates, college roommates with um, the director. Um, oh God, I can't think of the director. I can think of the composer. Ryan Cougar. <laughs> Ryan Cougar. Mm. Cougar. Yeah. Right. They were roommates. And he's doing EDM music, and he's from Switzerland. Oh, wow. He's doing EDM. So... He had to get into, he went to Africa to the yeah. actual the actual percussionist round table right. of African percussion players. Right. And it blew me away how much research he did, mm. how much he learned, mm. so he can make that score sound as authentic to this fictitious kingdom of no Wakanda. Doubt. And it worked. And it totally worked. Yeah, yeah. But then you hear the orchestral, the European influence in the orchestral. Yeah. See, now there's a guy, Michael Abels, his brother is the sharpest. He's he's on my radar for real. Yeah. But it's that style. He's taken, It's you can take the African-American 
classical sound of jazz mm -hmm. and our style of spiritual music and mix it with that yes. European flavor and you can get and, and it's winning. So uh, tell me something. So Would around. you consider scoring a foreign film? Yeah, I did. I did two films oh, you did? for an Indian director. Yeah, they're on my they're on my um, VLV.net. Okay. But um oh I said it without the WWW. <laughs> wow, I'm advancing. <laughs> okay. So so um anyway the point is <laughs> This guy, this kid came to me and he literally, you know, he says something from Mumbai and yeah. I would like, I listen to your stuff. And nice. I would really, I dream of you working with somebody. I said, don't dream, let's do it. Right. He says, but I, I don't know how much I could pay you. I said, so what? Let's do it. Yeah. Send it to me. The guy yeah. sent me 75 bucks. I scored wow. it short. I sent it back to him. He synced it. He put it in a festival in Milan, Italy. And he started winning some awards and doing some Have you things. won anything for scoring it? No, I haven't. I, I haven't. I haven't. I don't pay attention to that. I know you yet. don't. I know. I just got an agent in Los Angeles. I know. A week ago. I'm sorry. Did I so compose No, it's okay. So composers yeah. have agents? Yeah. Is it is it important? Is it it's necessary? It's very important. It is. Okay. We're the worst businessmen in the world. Oh, okay. Musicians are not great <laughs> businessmen because we have craftsmen. We just, you know, I have a background. But then you can say that about any any creative any person. Any creative. You're yeah. right. Okay. Well, yeah. but I, started, I get it though. I, that, I, but you know, you don't think about composers having agents. I mean, you just yeah, you, you just yeah. don't. You know what I mean? I have to. When you told me that, I was like, yeah, oh, wow, okay, yeah. that, that's interesting. And I'm rep by Who Got Branded, and that's Selena Hunter. Okay. And um, anyway, the point is, all these guys that I'm on forums with, all these composers that are far ahead of me, that are that I look up to, that mentor me, they all have somebody repping them. Got you. And it's Hollywood. I'd say either the William mm. Morris's or the um, Ingalls and Kraft, Kraft right. Ingalls, I mean, mm -hmm. or agencies like that, CAA. Mm. And um, the bottom line is you have to have somebody that's going to bat for your business end of it. Okay. To make sure you're getting paid, that you're not overworked, mm -hmm. that you're not doing things that are not necessary or damaging to your workflow you got you. and that whole nine yards. Right. Yeah, it's important. That yeah. I never thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> never did. Um what was I gonna ask you? I I just asked you. And that's funny. I was gonna ask you that about the managers and the agents and you told me yeah. that that you had I met with a manager the other night. Yeah. He's very, very gung ho and interested in management. So there's a difference in the agent and the manager. Big time. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Agent gets you work. Right. The agent gets and you work. And negotiates your contract. Right. They, they're about the money. Yes. And they're the managers, the managers, the managers are about you. They're about money, but they're about, you. they don't get you work. They're about positioning your career right. and trying to guide you. More branding. Right. More branding. Right. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. You know, because at this point right now, I'm in Atlanta and I don't plan to go to L.A. I went to L.A. three, four years ago and I made my mind up then. I said, I'm not going to do this. This is crazy. I'm going to stay in Atlanta and I'm going to grow. Mm -hmm. and I want to help grow the composers, the Grady babies here that will learn composing. And we are going to have our own flavor. This is our Hollywood and we can do this here. And we need it's to do it simple. right. Yeah. And we can do it right. Yeah. Right. Hence, so you heard me say it, so that's it. Podcast. Hold me to it and let's make it happen. Yeah. I went to California, too, and yeah. I stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. You know, I mean, I love it. I was not I loved, I received loved it. well. <laughs> not, it's not, I can tell it's not what I want to do. Yeah. You know, it's not, yeah. I don't want to go there and start over and do, but I don't even no, want to address that. No, I got you on Atlanta's that. Atlanta's the town. Yeah. Atlanta's where it's at. And the amount of talent in Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, is it's enough. It's we it's incredible what we can really do here. That's why they're here. They come here to shoot their movies, but they don't stay here All and the post time. their movies. So the posting is growing. We have some post houses here. Um, yeah. I'm not going to name them. It doesn't matter. But no, doesn't. I'm looking forward to working with them mm -hmm. from mix to picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, any room that's a Dolby Atmos room from mix to picture, not just music, is going to win with me. And that finalizes it. And so when the film actually goes to exhibition, it really sounds and looks good, That's whether right. it's a film festival or Whatever. whether it's in theater release. Mm -hmm. so, sound is important. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident we can make this happen. Do you do sound? 
Yeah, that's how I started. You, <laughs> my dad was not a joke. You, you're going to learn how electronics, you're going to learn how to repair TV, you're going to learn how to write, you're going to learn how to work or record. We had a studio in the basement, an Norelco recorder. We had a Norelco, we had an old... Um, Norelco? Tele Telefunken. Yes, we had old wow. stuff. We had the real original stuff. Ampex. Yeah. So you learned how to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he gave me free reign in the TV shop, and I set it on fire one time. It's okay. I built an app and I hooked How it up to the and speaker. Why? <laughs> yeah, well, because I had the B plus power going to the speaker. Oh, sucker cut a woofer cut on fire, pow! And I was like looking at it. Hey, my father was like, boy. <laughs> but a lesson learned, though. Oh yeah, it's always a lesson. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. That is hilarious. Fun. Um, we're gonna wrap this up. Okay. But I want you Thank to you. speak about um. Your teaching, your schooling, oh yeah, the wow. orchestra, and that you know what what you're doing now. I'm connected with a nonprofit called Shine, S H I N E Shine Film and Music dot com, and um, run by Tracy Morris, and it is incredible what we can do now. Mm. And I'm teaching. I started teaching some of these beat makers, like I said earlier. What I want to do now is open up a basic course. Something minimal, something that could easily be, it's affordable, you know, mm -hmm. and where you can start learning yeah. how this works. Yeah. The equipment that you're going to need, which is not much more than any of these beat makers. You need a laptop, the software, the audio interface, you know, blah, blah, blah. What software and do you use? The software, I use Logic Pro okay. and Pro Tools. I'm familiar on six platforms, but Logic Pro is the one. Most composers, the heavyweight composers that I know of use Cubase, mm -hmm. and there's another class of heavyweight composers that use Logic. Mm -hmm. I lean more with the Logic guys, of mm -hmm. course, because mm -hmm. I use Logic. Right. But, um... You can use Fruity Loops, okay. you can use Ableton, you can use uh, uh, Reason, mm -hmm. Audacity, Reaper, there's a bunch of them. Right. As long as you can do- I've heard a couple of those. As long as you can drop the video in and score to gotcha. the video mm. in Simpty Makes so that sense. you have a lock to with your synchronicity. Gotcha. So it's what we call sync and it syncs up. Okay. And you can make multiple tracks. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, I took you off of what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's okay. Um, yeah, but the point is, yeah, if if as long as you have that and you understand your DA, we call them DAWs or DAWs, Digital Audio Workstation. As long as you have your DAW gotcha. and you know what you're doing with it, mm -hmm. I can tell you. And I had a couple of students that recently just finished up. I they were Zoom classes. You know, we have a Zoom meeting and boom, I'm going to work out with you for 15 minutes. You do your thing. I'll show you how it works on mine. Let's translate it to how it works on yours. And, and it works. So I'm, nice. I'm gung ho. I'm, we're going to put together this curriculum. I was going to say shine and we haven't launched it yet, mm -hmm. but I want to launch it in such a way where it mushrooms. So the people I teach can teach as well. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That's the only way to do it. Okay. And, and, and in about 18 months, it, this area is going to be a whole different area. We'll How are you going to market it? Offer. How are you going to market that? Are you going to? That, I don't know. Oh. That's, not what I, that's not my department. Yeah. Because people, people are going to want to know about that. She does it, and we got social media, but she does it, okay. and we just took on somebody. We took on a um, company out of Canada, Vivial. Is, with my my website, my Vili Vision website, she's on it um, with Shine, and there's a link Oh, and it we're is. going okay. yeah, and Shine has its own website okay. because that's her thing. She's a teacher and she knows how that goes. Got you. I'm just, you know, I'm following right. I have I know what I do and that's I come in and do my thing. And we have others. We have maybe somebody that can come in and teach basic uh podcasting or stuff like that. Oh, you nice. Know? Okay. Yeah, there'll be a bunch of areas and I don't have anything to do with it. Right now we're concentrating on my own mixed to picture room. Yeah. That's it. No, I'm sorry. I have to take that back. It's not mix the picture, score the picture. Score the picture. So I can partner with a mix the picture. Gotcha. Room. It's okay. score the picture. So it's a it's a work in progress. OK, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be waiting on that. What about this orchestra you were talking about? Oh, wow. <laughs> I am building Daryl Peak and I, Daryl Peak Jr. Daryl Peak. Is awesome. He inherited his dad's orchestra, and um, I'm starting to build a 108-piece mm. scoring orchestra with Daryl's help, and we are going to be a working union and non-union nice. orchestra. 
and um, sections, you know, like a string section or a string and horn section or a percussion section. Mm -hmm. You know, you come in and you record them separately for different types of scenes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to we're going to start doing this. Got gotcha. you. And that, the main theme, everybody in one room, you know. If somebody wants to be part of that, where can they get? Just get in touch with me. At so, yeah. <laughs> tell us what your social media is. Once again, 26 Vlee V26 is my IG. Um, www. I was not to say that. Okay, <laughs> vlee.net. That's the that's my main solo. <laughs> vlee.net, and then there's vlevision.com. You get in touch with me through any of those platforms. My vlee.net has a um, a query question box. You can write anything in there, and it comes straight to my email. Cool. Uh, you can Google V L E E V and you're going to get 50 pages on me and my phone number shows up. So there it is. Okay. This phone right here on the floor down here. Take that word. The one he down. can't work. The one that I don't know how to work. It's brand new. So look, I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. What film have you seen that you wish that you could have scored? Oh my goodness! That's every film I see. <laughs> That's really? almost every but film. Why I see. do you feel that way? Because I want to just just like watching the TV and doing my. I'm. It's just. It's not that I could do it better. Oh. I just want to be doing it. Oh, I it's got not you. even that about. It's not about better now. Oh, you I, must have just took that out of my head because I was going to ask you. So what yeah. do you think you could do it better? <laughs> I love what these guys do because they always teach me something, and I can't wait to go home and try oh, something connected. Got with you. It. Got I never try. I never. We we have such respect for each other that we just talk. You know what I found out? Because I'm on three forums, I found out that we are the most humble guys. Like oh, I get, I got a ton of keyboard player friends. I got the big time famous keyboard player friends, and we all like always trying to outdo each other. Mm. There's none of that with the scoring guys. We're all so humble with how we do our thing. I had got some real strong criticism, but I went back to Woodshed and mm. I tried it and brought it back, and then I realized this guy was telling me something to make me sound like him. Yeah. Because don't worry, I didn't trash what I did, but I mm -hmm. wanted to see if I could do what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So now we're all talking together, and he's like, well, how do you play that? I had a guy tell me, because I, I have a blues background, my dad was a blues piano player in jazz, so I play blues like nobody's business, because I love it. I love boogie woogie, blues, stride piano, you know, all of that stuff, Kenny Burrell and all of that blah, 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 blah. So this guy, he's German, He's like, Michael Friedheimer is his name, by the way, and I say that name with the German ex Friedheimer. He's like, <laughs> he plays classical, my classical stinks to him. Mm. His blues is okay to gotcha. me. So I won't tell him it stinks, but okay, Michael, you're watching this, but we get together and we do that mashup because of the appreciation of each other's side. Gotcha. You see? Yeah. And this is what happens with all of us. All of us across the board. Mm -hmm. I could drop names. It doesn't even matter how famous they are. They don't care. It's like, um, Vince, could you, you know, I'll, so I'll take my phone out and I'll set it up and I'll videotape this, you know, because we talk the, the theory talk, the one, five, seven, and going to the fifth, the flat, the fifth, the ninth, the eleventh, you mm -hmm. know, great. But when they see the picture, oh, you're doing that. Oh, man, you, do you know you do that just like blah, blah, blah? I said, yeah, that's who I learned it from. <laughs> I watched him play. Cool. You know, I'm eight years old standing there watching McCoy Tyner or Father Earl Hines or whoever, Jimmy Smith. I'm 11 years old. I meet Jimmy Smith. Nice. You know. Yeah. 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 Thanks to my dad. My my um my favorite score is, and it's my, my favorite movie too, mm -hmm. uh, West Side Story. West Side Story. So you like show tunes. I guess. Yeah, you do. Because <laughs> that's a musical. It is a musical. Yes. But I mean, even yes. but even when you listen to the the score like mm -hmm. not not the music that they actually dance to but the, the original like the, or the new one no the original yes come okay, on now the original the, I, know, I, know. I haven't even seen the new one are I you know, kidding me it, it would probably that's just that's make me. me mad yeah so <laughs> no. you are talking the original yes i'm talking the original um that's leonard, uh, bernstein. leonard bernstein yes. yeah he's one that's of my original. favorites yeah and see let me tell you why because he's a composer's composer yes he is so the songs in its sense of songs or they get their play out, but then when you see it breaks down, yeah. you can hear the music that's related, yes. and it slides right into the psychological Sound. makeup of what the scene is going to see. Yes, and it slides into the songs, the that's music. Right, they, they segue yes. into the songs. Exactly. Those are real musicals. Yes. And during that era, 
um, My Fair Lady. Yes. Uh, oh, even even um, yeah, singing God, in the so rain. many singing in the rain. Yeah. All these, all these, and even Broadway theater was so influenced to the point of okay, we can imitate the movies, but it's a stage and it's one dimension. Yeah. But the music's gonna make it two dimensions. Yes. But we can't get the third dimension out of it. Yeah. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. See? I so. do. And I prefer. Well, West Side Story was a Broadway show first, which yes. I never saw, but. I wouldn't even watch it. <laughs> it wouldn't do it any justice. There you go. It's the music. <laughs> yes. It's always the music. Yes. Yeah. Vince, thank you for coming You're on welcome. my show. This was a pleasure. I, Man, I, had to I do appreciate this. I thought it was so, so important to do this. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Thank I'm you glad for you came. Me. Thank you. Well, that is it for Filmmakers Lab. We are on Wednesday nights now at 7 o'clock. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming to chat with us, sit with us. And come back and see what we chatting about on Filmmakers Lab. That's a wrap. Three, two.